Electric Automotive Group. Live from Charlotte, this is WBTV News on your side. Next at noon, Charlotte police arresting one of its own after a po veteran police officer is found falsifying documents for months. Live coverage from CMPD headquarters and the charges that officer is now facing. Plus, let's take a live look over the city of Charlotte where you may need your umbrella now and you'll certainly need it on your commute home today. That's because it's a first alert weather day. Meteorologist Lindsay DePassis will have an hour by hour breakdown on how the rain will impact the rest of the day. Good afternoon, I'm Christine Spiro. Thanks so much for watching today. We do have breaking news. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department has charged one of its own officers with lying on timesheets that cost the city thousands of dollars. Officer Todd Beltrone has been with the police department for nearly 20 years. WVTV's Ben Williamson just spoke with police and he joins us live outside CMPD headquarters with more on how officials within the department found this. Yeah, Christine, Officer Beltron Superior started noticing some irregularities, and after an investigation, they found that he actually falsified those timesheets at least 19 times since July of last year up until now. Now, the deputy chief that we spoke to says Officer Beltron would lie on those timesheets about when he was actually at work. The victim here is the city of Charlotte, who pays his salary, and the hours he was paid that he didn't work is roughly 7000 Dollars, according to police. Now, Beltron has been with the department since 1999, but these offenses occurred between July of 2018 and March of this year. Officers are required to use an electronic system to log those hours, and CMPD says they have systems of checks and balances to make sure officers are being honest. A Beltron was arrested for obtaining property under false pretenses. You know, I can say I'm disappointed today uh, professionally um, because, because we trust our people and we have a culture here that we don't tolerate uh, wrongdoing. And if somebody takes advantage of it, you know, it's sickening. And Officer Beltron has been placed on unpaid administrative leave as they continue this investigation. And the deputy chief says this is ongoing and more charges could be filed. Here in Uptown at police headquarters, Ben Williamson, WBTV, on your side. Thanks, Ben. Right now, jury deliberations are underway in the murder trial of Raekwon Borum. That's the man accused of killing protester Justin Carr during the 2016 Keith Lamont Scott protest in Uptown Charlotte. Day three of deliberations started earlier this morning. WBTV's Caroline Hicks is at the courthouse where the deliberations have been taking place. And Caroline, any updates on if the jury is near a decision? Well, Christine, we've learned it could be a while longer. So far, jurors have spent upwards of 12 hours deliberating on this case, trying to decide whether to convict Raekwon Borum of first degree or second degree murder or come back and say he's not guilty at all. Now, we're getting details from our reporter who is inside of the courtroom. She tells us the jury came back with another question for the judge, asking if they can rewatch state exhibit videos at full speed and half speed. They asked for four videos videos, all of which will be played in court. That means it could be a little while longer until they make this decision. First degree murder would carry a life sentence in prison. The lesser charge of second degree murder would mean less prison time, depending on which element of malice is proved or they could come back with a not guilty charge. They'll also be deciding a charge of possession of a firearm by a felon. Of course, we'll continue to bring you updates throughout the day and let you know once this verdict is reached. Reporting live outside the Mecklenburg County Courthouse, Caroline Hicks, WBTV, on your side. Thank you, Caroline. Here's a live look at our HD Tower Cam at this hour. See a good bit of cloud cover. Uh, we've had some rainfall earlier this morning, and it's going to get progressively worse as we get further into the day for the immediate Charlotte area, at least. Meteorologist Lindsay DePass is standing by with a look at your first alert weather. It's a first alert day. Depending on where you live, you're getting different types of precipitation. Yeah, we've had some rain, some sleet, even a couple of breaks of sun over the last couple of hours. So really, literally a little bit of everything. But the rain is starting to fill back in for us in the Charlotte 
Charlotte area, and that snow is just starting now to finally pull out for some of our mountain counties. Even though we did see some limited sun, some breaks at points earlier this afternoon, the clouds are pretty thick now. And again, beneath those clouds, the rain is starting to fill back in. For the most part, pretty patchy across the Charlotte metro. Some heavier pockets towards Cleveland, Catawba, Lincoln, and Gaston counties. And then again, that snow that's uh, been going on for most of the morning across the mountains, only now finally starting to pull out uh, there. You see with the radar returns thinning out a little bit over Ash and Watauga counties, although there are still some big flakes falling uh, that we can see from the uh, Boone Resort cams. Now, the winter weather advisory was extended a few more hours. That will no now go until 7 p.m. this evening. Uh, temperatures in most of those higher elevations are still below freezing at this hour. Now, for the rest of us, as forecast, we're going to continue to watch that radar fill back in through the remainder of this evening. So here we go at 6 o'clock, height of the evening rush. It does look like we'll have pretty good coverage of rain uh, for the Charlotte Metro and most areas outside of the higher elevations. We'll talk about what this means for the weekend. That forecast actually looks like it's slightly improved over yesterday. So that's a bit of good news coming up in just a few minutes. Christine. Thanks, Lindsay. Right now, police are still asking for your help finding this teenager who's been missing for nearly a year. Alizé Harley went missing from Somerville, South Carolina on March 10th last year. Her family has been searching for her ever since. Officials believe she could be in Charlotte. If you have seen her at all, contact the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at the number there on your screen. It's 1-800-843-5678. A group of children safe this afternoon after getting into a crash on a school bus on their way to school. It happened on Barrett Road in Clover, South Carolina. School officials say a vehicle ran a stop sign and then tried to brake but hit the front of the bus. Fortunately, no one on the bus was hurt. Also this afternoon, we're working to learn the condition of a person shot in North Charlotte. It happened earlier this morning on North Tryon Street near Matheson Avenue. Police have not said what led to the shooting or if they have any leads on an arrest. As soon as we learn more, we will let you know. And we do know the name of a person killed in a car crash in South Carolina. It happened on South Tryon Street near the intersection of Nevada Boulevard, just south of the I-485 loop. Police say 57-year-old Barry Sims ran off the road and hit a curb, overturning his car before crashing into a pole. Sims was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, officers are still investigating, trying to figure out what caused him to drive off the road. They say speed was not a factor. President Trump's former campaign chairman received a 47-month prison sentence after being convicted on fraud and tax evasion charges. The sentence was much lighter than the sentencing recommendations for that type of crime. His lawyer and the president say that proves there was no collusion between Trump and Russia. Nicole Killian has more details from the White House. President Trump is defending his former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, who was just sentenced to prison. I feel very badly for Paul Manafort. Uh, I think it's been a very, very tough time for him. Thursday, Judge T.S. Ellis called the recommended sentence of 19 to 24 years for fraud and tax evasion excessive and handed Manafort a term of nearly four years. That's even less time than Manafort's own attorneys asked for. What you saw today is the same thing that we had said from day one. There is absolutely no evidence that Paul Manafort was involved with any collusion with any government official from Russia. That comment did not go unnoticed by the president. His lawyer went out of his way, actually, to make a statement last night. No collusion with Russia. There was absolutely none. Before departing for Alabama, President Trump would not answer a question about whether he would pardon Mr. Manafort. Instead, he focused on his former attorney, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen lied about the pardon. I know it's a stone-cold lie, and he's lied about a lot of things, but when he lied about the pardon, that was really a lie. Cohen, who has pled guilty to lying to Congress in the past, told Congress last week that he never sought a presidential pardon. I have never asked for, nor would I accept, a pardon from President Trump. A lawyer for Cohen said his statement was true, but he acknowledged his client directed his legal team last spring to talk to President Trump's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, about the possibility of a pardon. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Next on WBTV News at noon, singer R. Kelly remains behind bars, but according to his manager, that won't be for long. When he's expected to bail out of jail, still ahead.